Hello, my name is Anton Debuncio. I'm the co-founder of Via Technic, a firm focused on working with owners, real estate developers, general contractors, and trade partners to transform the built environment from working via analog processes to a digital workflow, enabling industrialized construction, digital twins, and a digital real estate experience. Prior to co-founding Via Technic, I worked at Bain & Company, advising clients in the high-tech manufacturing space. Hi everyone, my name is Chuhan Lee, uh, Serious Studio Lead at Via Technique, uh, which is a team that focuses on computational solutions and software development. Uh, prior to Via Technique, I worked at a few different types of AEC companies, ranging from architectural design firm and engineering consulting firms, and delivered a wide range of digital solutions. Today, Juhin and I are going to share with you our take on the path to industrialized construction that is less talked about in the industry. How agile, algorithms, and artificial intelligence can get firms to succeed in industrialized construction. A lot of us here have heard why industrialized construction is going to change the industry. We see it in industry publications all the time. In fact, the most read article in BD plus C last year was the epic rise in industrial, industrialized construction. We've talked about this for years and many of us are still wondering where's that breakthrough team that's going to transform the industry. The concept of this is very appealing. Working inside a controlled environment yields certainty and opportunities for increased productivity. We've even seen the benefits work out in industries like manufacturing, where you get to build more with less people. Your environment is much safer then, because working conditions are better, you also combat the skilled labor shortage. The more ideal the work environment, the more people you can attract. The opportunity to build a more diverse and inclusive workforce arises. The picture has been painted in many of our minds, humans and robots working in harmony with reduced variability in production. This is a story we've all heard of, the opportunity of a virtuous cycle that benefits all stakeholders. In the midst of all the great opportunities that we see here are very real challenges that haven't made it front and center in our industry. We hear about the benefits, the money being raised, the factories opening up. Unfortunately, we don't hear as much about the challenges. We work with a wide variety of clients in this space and have seen firsthand how this is really hard to do right. And we have a lot of respect for the companies that are in the midst of working through their challenges and getting it right. We are currently seeing that costs are still high. Companies are still being supported by large amounts of capital. Issues we still see include manufacturing teams not understanding that you can't standardize product across an entire portfolio. Construction teams not understanding that an eighth inch bust is a big deal in manufacturing. We've even heard of factories delivering modular units that were incorrectly dimensioned, so they ship the entire modules back to the factory for rework. As Juhin and I were talking about what we are seeing, it reminded us of the early days in the web. Some of you may be familiar with WebVan. For those of you who aren't, WebVan was founded at the heyday of the original dot-com era by the founder of Borders Bookstore, bookstores of all things. Investors pushed them to grow as fast as they could, seeing the benefits of being a first mover. Investors wrote WebVan checks of over $400 million. They signed a contract with Bechtel to build distribution centers for a billion dollars. So a lot of their funds were used to build the infrastructure and distribution centers. The problem is they couldn't get customers in the door and they didn't have enough runway to learn the intricacies of the business. Funny enough, Amazon resurrected WebVan in 2009. So this was common during the dot-com era use funds to build the infrastructure, build the servers, hire a ton of people, and build a business around it. Is this starting to sound familiar? Now we look back at the web 1.0 days and say, man, those people were reckless. 
They raced large amounts of capital, got big fast, scaled, and just hoped that it would work. And what happened if it didn't? Well, that was Webvan and Pets.com and eToys.com and many more. From the ashes of Web 1.0 came the likes of Steve Blank, Eric Ries, and Y Combinator. The lean startup movement was born, where founders were forced to build a product with almost nothing. No servers, no people, no budget. What could you do with a few thousand dollars? This movement totally flipped the startup mentality on its head. Why raise a boatload of money and keep all that high risk at the front end of the venture? That doesn't make sense at all. The lean startup movement is based on the framework of creating a minimum viable product with almost no capital, measure with real metrics and not some vanity metric like clicks or eyeballs, and use that data to improve your idea and build a better product and continue this iterative process. Oh, by the way, the least important thing in every startup is your idea. Ideas are cheap. With that framework came some very great companies. A lot of firms, both inside the AEC space and outside the industry, have come from a $125,000 check. You have PlanGrid, Matterport, then you have Airbnb, Dropbox. All these great companies have come in and transformed the industry. So as Anton mentioned, um, it seems like AEC industry has been pursuing quite a similar approach to Web 1.0 today. Um, companies try to raise a huge amount of capital and put a lot of investment on infrastructure, such as factories and supply chains, on top of a big investment on a software platform at the same time. So that way they can surely increase the level of vertical integration. I think that um, it is a valid approach. Perhaps the ideal goal of the industrialized construction in the future. But one problem is that um, it has a higher risk of failure, simply because such big infrastructure, it will require much more things to control and there will be more things that could go wrong, which isn't something we all can afford. We all not a um, multi-billion dollar startup. We want everything in a perfect way, but in most cases, reality isn't like that. So when you think of a factory, for example, or a car factory, you usually imagine a long conveyor belt along with fully or partially automated robots moving around and assembling all the parts. It looks so efficient and it probably it is almost uh, already maximum efficiency, I would assume. Um, but it seems like everything is moving seamlessly, step by step, from the beginning to the end of production. That is the ideal, the goal of industrialized construction, right? So what makes that possible for them, but why not for us? I think AEC has a little bit disadvantages in terms of economy of scale. For example, Tesla Model 3, Tesla, they are selling about 160,000 units per year, and it is growing. Whereas one fancy iconic building costs about a few hundred million dollars for a one-time contract. And usually um, the, the cost is not an investment. It is rather an execution cost. This is huge difference. In industrialized product business, they have motivation to invest a huge amount of money on building up infrastructure and platforms in both physical and digital space because it is an investment for the future and it will pay off. On the other hand, we as an AC professional tend to start a new project from scratch. I mean, there will be some overlaps between different buildings here and there, but one building is different from another building. Even within the same building, this detail is different from that detail and so on. 
I don't think it is a bad thing. It is just the way it is, our reality. Uh, yet, with such constraints and limitations, quite a few companies have made tremendous, tremendous progress and success in the industrialized construction field. Those companies are really proving that uh, the concept of industrialized construction is possible and bringing up many more potentials to our industry, which is great. So we want efficiency, modularity, sustainability, and affordability in AEC through this industrialization concept. But we also want some beautiful, unique, and diverse design and everything in between. So I think what we need is uh, what we need to achieve such a wide range of problems, design problems, are agile digital solutions they can, that can adapt and tackle various specific problems rather than a huge platform like software designed to solve all possible problems could potentially happen at any stage. And I, I think AEC has very good uh, fundamentals for that approach actually we we all know that we have beam which which serves as a central database of design or project we also have ever growing interest in imp interest and implementations of data driven design generative design parametric modeling many many optimization algorithms for design and so on so that now we can quickly evaluate hundreds of thousands of options and make really good design decisions out of them. Especially for industrialized construction approach, data-driven design can play a huge role. Modular design is going to have a limited number of design input constraints and performance measurement as an output, it is under more controlled environment. That means we can automate more, optimize it better, and build a very compact, if effective computational solution. But to me, the most important aspect of this approach is that it really opens up possibility of utilizing machine learning for our design practice and gaining even greater efficiency. What that means is that using data-driven generative design, we can actually create a near perfect data set to a specific problem because it populates options based on input parameters, which becomes data input and then it evaluates those options based on some performance matrices like structural analysis, energy simulations, and that becomes an output for machine learning to predict. Once you have a trained model between these two data points, now you can predict the outcome of nearly unlimited number of design options without running actual simulations or generative design algorithm at all. Of course, um, implementing machine learning isn't a click of a button thing, at least not yet. But it is also not a rocket science. In fact, many of our peers have been already trying to implement this technology into our daily practice. I've seen many of Jan generative adversarial network implementation for AEC design practice. I guess this is because the uh, typical outcome of GAN is usually visual things like image, video, or 3D model. There are many interesting applications such as automatic plan generation based on building boundary, stress estimation tool for concrete slab, 3D model reconstruction from point cloud data. 
Speaking of visual things, there are also quite a few computer vision related implementations, such as automatic building defect de de detection algorithm from a drone video feed or photos, automatic crack detection of various types of infrastructure. So it is not just for design, it can be really useful for infrastructure management as well. And of course, data management and prediction model in general, let's say you have a construction site to manage. Uh, there will be all sort of data you can collect, like uh, staff allocation, uh, material delivery and distribution status, weather data, and many more. Then you could potentially predict and optimize some measurements which is uh, cost impact, uh, schedule, safety issues, or something else. For, for facility management, you can collect some data as well, like occupant status and locations, um, MEP related equipment data, weather data outside, various temperature data points from sensors, then you may want to predict and optimize, let's say, uh, energy consumption. And back to industrialized construction theme, we can also establish a recommendation system based on uh, machine learning. For example, for uh, building component design, a trained machine could recommend a certain product linked with supply chain based on design constraint and, con uh, and conditions. It is basically a prediction model which tries to come up with the best possible decisions within a given condition. Uh, we can also think about an error prediction and warning system. Let's say a company has found that certain beam protocols cause some critical issues during fabrication processes, then we can train a model to monitor how people use beam on a daily basis and warn them if there is any potential risk predicted by a machine. I know it sounds a little bit scary, but I think it could be really useful when it comes to manage, managing a huge construction project. In general, I really believe that there are so many opportunities with machine learning and we just need to identify what types of problems we have and try to find the best solution to improve how we work as AEC professional. Obviously, I'm overly simplifying things here, uh, but I just wanna give some example of what we can do now, not 10 years later. In fact, like I said, many AAC companies are already fully utilizing machine learning technology. So don't wait, try to find what you can improve. Thank you so much, uh, that's all for my part. And Anton will discuss a few more project examples and share more of his thoughts on the subject. Thank you, Juhun. Some of you may be wondering, like, how do we do this now? How are these concepts actually being used? Here's an example of the Lean Startup Framework, Automation and Algorithms in Action. So Sturgeon, Sturgeon Electric, one of the leading electrical contractors in the country, manufactures these duckback plates that they cut from sheets of plastic. These plates are needed in different sizes and different configurations for their various projects. They use tons of these sheets annually. Today, these plates are cut from large sheets of plastic by this cutting machine. However, the plates are not necessarily laid out in a way that reduces waste from sheets, and it takes time to enter this information into the cutting machine. So the time wasted here is linked to figuring out how to lay out sheets, how to lay out plates in the sheets, and also the amount of material wasted from not using the most amount of material on a plate. 
The forward thinking leaders then at Sturgeon Electric said, can we actually build a tool that automates our needed layouts on a sheet and reduce the wasted plastic sheets? So we worked with their team to build an automation tool that does just this and not only solve the problem, but also measure the amount of time saved and the amount of plastic waste. So now their factory logs into this manufacturing duct bank optimizer. The user enters the needed plates into the system. The user clicks optimize to run the packing algorithm to maximize the number of plates on a sheet. And the system opt outputs the optimal layout that produces waste and gets information to their factory instantly. It's that simple. Some people wonder if that even makes any difference. This is so simple, anyone could have done it. But that's part of the concept of the Lean Startup Framework. Now, this isn't as glamorous as buying a factory or hiring a bunch of fancy programmers or buying a ton of robots and getting engineers to transform the organization. But it accomplishes real results with very little waste and no risk and sets the stage for further product and process improvement. From duck bank optimization, the organization can then start moving over to solving their other ideas, such as, can we optimize our conduit delivery and vending? Can we optimize our kit produ production? Can we optimize our material logistics? Can we optimize our material sourcing? All of this with very little risks. And you know, once the firm starts building their products and processes, to solve these iteratively and successfully and starts getting answers to these questions, suddenly you have a firm that looks more like this. One that looks more like a manufacturing company rather than a traditional trade contractor with very little risk, iterating quickly, moving on to the next automation and manufacturing task with real measured results and little risk. As the Sturgeon example showed, this should start out as an easy journey. So simple, people are scratching their heads and saying, why didn't we do this before? And snowball into something bigger. So how can we all take that step towards the goal of industrialized construction? The web van route exists, but it is lined with risks. There's an alternative to full blown factory building and vertical integration. That might still be the end goal, but over an iterative journey. As we've seen through the Sturgeon process, think of what can be done today. The Sturgeon team did the boring stuff, spent time understanding the organization, collecting the data, mapping out the processes, identifying the sources of issues. From there, you can ask yourself, what problem can we solve today? What processes can be automated? Where can we utilize algorithms to better solve our issues? What can we start manufacturing? Think about the alternative path. We all agree that industrialized construction is attractive. The lean startup method offers us and the industry a solution that limits risk, builds upon success, and iteratively gets us to the same destination. Thank you.